Okay, we last looked at these figures for inter-entity transactions between the parent and subsidiary over the year end, uh, and we had to make some adjustments and accelerate those transactions through to the respective balance sheet. Uh, this is a different issue, uh, and it's uh, to do with unrealized profit. So the example here says that the parent sells inventory to the subsidiary for 10,000, call it, say we're working in thousands, uh, and the profit margin is 10%. Now, what we need to do here is just have a think about what's going on. Um, once we consolidate, if we've made a profit from our own subsidiary, we've sold to the subsidiary at a profit, um, then when we consolidate these two accounts as if they were one business, we can't really uh, consider that we're making a profit by selling to our own uh, our own subsidiary. What would be the point? So we have to reduce retained earnings and we have to reduce by the profit. Now then, if the, uh, in this case, the subsidiary who bought the goods is able to sell on those goods to a third party, i.e. outside the group, then we can realize that profit. So what we need to do, therefore, is to make an adjustment for any goods that remain unsold. So let's just uh, put a figure in here. Um, so the subsidiary, the subsidiary, uh, has sold, let's say, 60%, oh, 80% of the goods by year end. So that means that 20% of the profit uh, achieved by the parent at the expense of the subsidiary has remained in the group. And we therefore need to make a provision for that unrealized profit, a profit that we've not passed on to a third party outside of the group. So let's have a quick look at how much that provision might be and where we will make that provision. So this is going to be the provision for unrealized profit, also known as a PUP or a PUP. Uh, uh, and let's look at how much the total profit would be. We sold goods worth 10,000 uh, and the profit margin is 10. Well, let's just work in, in single thousand units. So the profit is, uh, sorry, the total sale value is 10 and the margin is 10%. Uh, so that is going to be the profit is in this case, is the margin. There's another video on the difference between margins and markups, so uh, have a look at that. I'll put a link in the uh, in the description. Uh, but what we need to do is the sale price, sale price equals 10, the margin equals 10%, so the profit, which is the same as the margin, equals 10% times 10,000, uh, which equals, uh, in this case, 1,000. So the total profit of the goods sold to the subsidiary is 1,000, or whatever units these are. Let's put some units in here just... Uh, just so that we know what we're talking about. Uh, so we're in thousands uh, okay um, so this is 1,000 in profit. We've sent uh, sold 10,000 and we've made 1,000 profit. Now by the year end 
the subsidiary has sold 80% of the goods. So it's passed on 80% of this 1,000 profit to a third party outside of the group. Uh, so that means that 20% remains in the group. So it's a very simple calculation. Profit remaining in the group is uh, 20% times the 1,000 uh, for the total amount of goods. So that is 20% times 1,000 is 200 pounds. So 200 pounds, or if we're dealing in thousands, 0 0.2. Uh, just make this consistent formatting. 0 0.2. So we need to make an adjustment of 0 0.2 uh, for the profit remaining in the group that we haven't sold on. Uh, right, that's the first part. Uh, and that's the value of the pup. Now, where do we put this adjustment? Well, we need to reduce the retained earnings uh, of the company that made the sale. We've made a profit, it's unrealized, so we need to reduce the profit. That kind of makes sense. Uh, so we will need to reduce the retained earnings of the company making the sale, which was the parent. So we go to the parent figure and we make a reduction of this amount of the pup uh, and on the retained earnings. So minus, uh, let's just uh, make that a label, uh, minus 0.2 on the retained earnings. So we've made uh, an adjustment on the bottom half, the liability half of the balance sheet. So we need to make an adjustment as well on the top half. Uh, so we need to reduce the inventory because the inventory is overstated. We've sold it at a profit uh, and we need to uh, redress that. So where do we do that? We can either do the subsidiary, which is overstated, that owns the goods, or the inventory of the parent, which has sold the goods. And it might be counterintuitive, um, but it's actually, uh, by tradition, uh, put in the inventory of the selling entity. So we reduce this by 0 0.2 as well. Oops. 0.2. negative 0 0.2. Um, so hereby we've taken the profit remaining in the group, which is overstated. Uh, we've reduced the retained earnings of the selling entity. That kind of makes intuitive sense. And although it may be slightly unintuitive, we also reduce the inventory of the parent as well. And of course, when we come to consolidate, we're just going to add these two figures together so it doesn't really make a difference, um, but it's slightly counterintuitive. Uh, but for now, we'll just put it there uh, under the inventory of the selling entity, which in this case was the parent. Uh, it could easily have been the other way around, in which case we would have reduced the retained earnings of the subsidiary, had that been the selling entity, and reducing the inventory as well. So there we go, that's the adjustment for an unrealized profit on the balance sheet. Uh, we calculated the profit for the whole sale. Uh, in this case it was a margin, so that's easy to calculate. It could easily have been a markup, which is calculated slightly differently. So just be careful we're using the right method. Uh, the margin was 10% of 10,000, which is 1,000 and the uh, amount of goods remaining in the group, well, we'd sold 80%, so we had 20% remaining. So 20% of this 1,000 profit is uh, 200 or 0 0.2 if we're dealing in thousands. So we take this 0 0.2, uh, re uh, 
deduct it from the retained earnings, which makes sense because this made a profit on the sale. And just uh, by uh, tradition, we also remove the cost or the PUP from the inventory of the selling entity as well. And when we consolidate, we'll just carry all those figures across to the consolidating amount for inventory. Uh, and there we have it. Uh, we'll then use the the adjusted retained earnings to calculate retained earnings um, uh, in the normal way for a consolidation. So that's the provision for unrealized profit uh, on an inter-entity sale.